In The Mandalorian Chapter 18, when Bo-Katan is leading Din Djer into the minds of Mandalore, she mentions her childhood being brought up in the royal family of House Kreis. At one stage, she mentions her father and how he died defending Mandalore. This is in reference to Duke Adonai Kreese, who fought during the Clan Wars, also known as the Mandalorian Civil War, a conflict between the new Mandalorian peace movement and the martial traditionalists for control of the homeworld of Mandalore. Now, when Bo-Katan mentioned him, it kind of stuck with me that what if this is not a throwaway line? What if it has importance later on? Now, season three, as we've seen in the first two episodes, is dealing with tradition and Mandalorian identity, and it must be said that with Bo-Katan wanting to rule the homeworld once again, maybe tame the Mythosaur, but definitely reunite the clans, the subject of her heritage and Mandalorian history is going to come up, notably the clan wars, and this in my opinion could lead to several flashbacks where we see Bo's father. And here's my theory, what if he's played by Christopher Lloyd? If you remember last year, making Star Wars exclusively revealed that Christopher Lloyd is playing an old Mandalorian chieftain who is the rival to another clan leader, but they never said if it was going to be present day. So what if this is in flashbacks later in the season, and we see what Adonai was like back in the day? We might even see some of Bo-Katan's youth and her relationship with her dad, maybe even young Bo and Duchess Satine, who took over rulership when their dad was killed. She was part of the peace movement, and so clashed in opinion with her father and sister. Satine was a pacifist, so I reckon to expand our understanding and appreciation for Bo's past, they might draw a vivid picture through flashbacks. This could also be fantastic fan service, as the opportunity for a live-action Duchess Satine presents itself. And if we do see a flashback to the Mandalorian Civil War, we've also got to remember that Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan were sent to Mandalore to protect Duchess Satine, who later fell in love with Kenobi. I'm not saying we'll see them in the flashback, but how amazing would it be if we did? Such a flashback could also show more casual audiences why it matters that Bo-Katan was more warrior-like than her sister, joining Death Watch at a young age and holding a different perspective on Mandalorian culture. It could also give legitimacy to the fact that Bo followed her father's legacy and now she wants to carry that on by standing up for what's right and defending the homeworld of Mandalore. Even though by chapter 17 she was defeated and gave up, in the last episode we saw the spark reignite, she saw Din's passion and realised uniting the clans and the homeworld is more important than being divided, their differences don't matter as much. This is so important if she's going to be the ruler of the homeworld by the end of the season. I also suspect the way in which Bo-Katan's father died is going to be very important to the present day storyline. Given that we know Bo-Katan, the tribe and other Mandalorian clans are going to work together, what if Adonai was killed by someone in the Children of the Watch? This would add poetry and depth to Bo and Din's philosophical disagreements. Although some fans do theorise the Children of the Watch didn't exist till after the Purge, they were an offshoot of Death Watch the group that rescued and adopted Mando. But either way, a flashback could show just how divided Mandalorians were, even back then, and how this fracturing and division always leads to conflict. There are lessons to be learned, even though the state of the galaxy is much different now with the New Republic and the Imperial Remnant, and the aftermath of the Mandalorian Civil War leading up to the Clone Wars is vital to understand as well. How pacifistic Mandalorians and those with more aggressive, protective mentalities could not see eye to eye. Once and for all, Mandalorians need to set aside their differences and work together, and I think eventually that's going to happen. Din Djarin said, Our people are scattered like stars in the galaxy, and it's understandable that their morale is broken. The Night of a Thousand Tears, the planetary bombardment, the fusion bombs, what the Empire did to Mandalore was terrible. It's caused heartbreak and devastation, and in a large way it impacted every single Mandalorian, even those who survived. So at this stage in the timeline, the lack of unity, the scattering, Bo-Katan really cares about her people. When she saw what Sundari had become, it destroyed her inside. But I think it was also a wake-up call that something needs to be done. So as I say, could Christopher Lloyd play Adonai Kreese in flashbacks? Is that who his mystery character is? Chapter 19 drops in just two days' time. We don't know the episode title, but it's going to be 56 minutes and 11 seconds in length. It's directed by a new name in the galaxy far, far away, Lee Isaac Chung, and written by Noah Clore and John Favreau. Up until this point in the season, in terms of writing credits, it's just been John Favreau, but this week it's co-written by Noah Clore, and next week is John and Dave's episode, directed by Carl Weathers. Some fans think that episode could include some tie-ins to the Ahsoka series, 
given that Dave Filoni worked on it, but could next week's episode also be the one with Clone Wars flashbacks? It seems as though with the Mandoverse, whether it's The Mandalorian or The Book of Boba Fett, any episode that Dave Filoni had impact on seems to include a tie-in or connection to some of his previous work, usually his animated stuff, bringing those into live action. He did this with Ahsoka and Cad Bane, and while he's not directing in this season, he co-wrote Chapter 20 and the penultimate episode Chapter 23 by Rick Famuyiwa. And so now, my dear friends, as always, a little bit of Star Wars news. Disney just unveiled a real lightsaber, and Star Wars fans are in awe. Of course, the word real is in quotation marks, but it's the most visually impressive and accurate they've ever made. Josh Damaro, Disney Parks and Experiences chairman, gave a presentation at this week's SXSW, and one moment in particular has excited Star Wars fans across the globe. Explaining to those in attendance, Disney is going to hone in on, quote, storytelling with real lightsabers. He declared, I have the coolest job in the world, before adding, I'm holding a real lightsaber. He then hit a button, igniting it on the side, and the blue beam of the blade shot out from it, enticing gasps from the audience. He said the lightsaber is one of the props used on board Disney's Star Cruiser. It certainly is impressive. These lightsabers are ultra expensive, something he does acknowledge on stage. And so finally, Hayden Christensen continues to confirm his love for the Clone Wars series, claiming, quote, he is indebted to its portrayal of Anakin. In a new interview with Esquire, Christensen discussed the changing perception of his character. In his own words, he said, of course, yeah, I love the Clone Wars. I think what Dave Filoni did with the Clone Wars and Rebels are brilliant. I'm indebted to Dave Filoni because I think he helped the character of Anakin a lot. I think he fleshed out the character and also furthered our understanding of Anakin's relationship with the Jedi and the Council and the mistrust he harboured. He was then asked if that influenced his performance in the Kenobi show, and he replied, it did. I feel I know the character, but it certainly helped to see all of that, and I gained a lot from it. Now, it's very clear that after the unwarranted and oftentimes cruel criticism of the prequels, Christensen recognises the value of the Clone Wars series, and how that led to a renaissance of appreciation of those films. And in every way, he thanks Dave Filoni for that. But it's also really cool to know that Hayden is a big fan of the animated shows and gave them a chance. There is going to be a retrospective Kenobi panel at Star Wars Celebration, and who knows, maybe we'll find out if there is going to be a Kenobi season 2. Could they announce it there? Let's wait and see. So share your thoughts on my theory and the news we covered in today's video down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and if you haven't done so already, why not check out our Patreon page? You get your name at the end of my videos, you also get access to regular exclusive mega streams, tons of content not found here on YouTube, our Discord server, and so much more. But until the next one guys, may the force be with you always.